If you only had 10 exercises for the rest of time to stay as muscular as possible, give me the list. If I was to answer this question on the Modern Wisdom Podcast, the first thing that I would do would get the list of muscles that I want to hit with these 10 exercises. The first one being chest, and then shoulders, and then triceps. That's all my upper body pushing muscles done. Then I would head to the back and do lats, rhomboids, and biceps. Those are most of the pulling muscles that I want to focus on. Then I'd head to the lower body, quads, calves, and hamstrings. That's nine, and then we have one left for abs. So first off, let's do the best chest exercise for building muscle. Before I get into this exercise, we need to consider that these are only 10 exercises that we're limited to. This may not be the best muscle building chest exercise in the world, but if I had to cut down to one, this would be it. So I would choose incline dumbbell chest press with a neutral grip. Why is it incline and what angle incline is it? Well, I would do incline to focus on upper chest. And when we focus on upper chest, it gives us this nice kind of shelf look to our chest. So when we wear a singlet, our chest is popping at the top. I would do a 30 degree angle. If we do flat, it's obviously going to be more of the juicier part of the pecs. If we're going more of an incline, the more upright it gets, the more shoulders and upper chest it's going to be. So I like to be kind of somewhere in the middle with 30 degrees. 45 degrees is just a bit too steep. And the reason I'm using dumbbells instead of a barbell is because I get this extra range of motion at the bottom. I can stretch all the way down here. If I was using a barbell like this, it would stop here. The range of motion is less. And we know that the research for building muscle, it's often better if we can get a nice deep stretch at the bottom which I can do with the dumbbell. So here's what a few reps would look like. All the way down, three seconds, and then when I push up, I go up and in. Feet down and corkscrewing into the floor. Shoulder blades back and down. <sighs> up and in. Moving on to shoulders. The behind the back cable lateral raise is my favorite, my personal favorite shoulder exercise to get wider deltoids. Now, with the inclined dumbbell chest press that we just did, that's already working the anterior deltoid or the front of the shoulder. But if you want to get wide Superman shoulders, you want to work the lateral head of the deltoid or the medial deltoid. So the behind the back cable lateral raise requires us to cross the weights at the back. This is how I like to get ready. And the beauty of using cables instead of dumbbells, which is what most people would use, is that at the bottom, there's already tension on my muscles. If I was holding dumbbells right here, there'd be no tension on my shoulders because gravity is just pulling the weight down. But with this, the cable is actually already pulling against my shoulders. So what I'm doing here is I'm going out at a 30 degree angle. I'm not just going out the side like a seagull flapping its wings, getting no shoulder gains at all. I'm going 30 degrees out in front. Now we want to explode up and do two to three seconds on the way down. The tricep dip would have to be my favorite tricep exercise full stop because you can literally handle the most weight with this exercise. You could also do a close grip bench press, but with this exercise, we've, uh, sorry, with this 10 best exercise thing, we've already done a pressing exercise, so there's no point doing a close grip bench. With this tricep dip, I'm going to do a slight forward lean and that's going to get more costal chest into the movement, which just means lower chest. So when I come up, I want to get as much range of motion as possible and also do a slight lean forward, like I said. So I'm, like I literally pull my knees back, so I'm leaning forward and full range of motion. I like to get my nose all the way down here and and then push up. If I'm more upright like this, it's more triceps, that's for sure. But since we're so limited with exercises here, we only got 10 for the rest of our life, I'm gonna do that slightly and forward, get some lower chest as well as triceps. Now the beauty of this exercise, like I said, is if I wanna be a tough guy, like I said, you can add a lot more weight. So if I only got 10 exercises to do for the rest of my life, at least I'm gonna be lifting a decent amount of weight when I'm doing my tricep dips. The chin up with a neutral grip is my favorite lat exercise of all time. However, your form has to be really locked in. With any exercise that you do, your form has to be locked in, but especially this one, because you can just kind of like pull yourself up with a pull up or with a chin up and just get up with biceps and just kind of like momentum. If you want to be a crossfitter, cool bro. But if you want to get lat gains, what we want to do is when we pull, we want to think of driving our elbows down. So elbows down, instead of thinking chin above the bar, because then that just kind of turns out to be like a neck extension, you want to be driving your elbows to the floor. So full range of motion always, so your arms are straight. You have to have a dead hang at the bottom like this. So you're hanging like that, and then you initiate by pulling your shoulder blades back and down. Sorry, not back and down, just down. So shoulder blades down, and then drive your elbows to the floor and that will pull your chin above the bar. You don't need to reach out like that. And then you just lower down two to three seconds. And then at the bottom, you fall down into the sunken scapula uh, protraction. So here, we fall down to there. So let's do some reps just so you can get an idea for it. One.
And lastly, I chose a neutral grip because that often feels better for people's shoulders in comparison to a pronated grip. For the rhomboids, we have the Barbell Benta Vero with a pronated grip. You have the option of supinated as well. I just prefer pronated. I think it feels better and you can actually lift more weight. Now, the way to do it for rhomboids is actually slightly different if you want to row for lats. So if you want to row for lats, if you're in that Benta Vero position, you kind of pull more elbows toward hips like this. So boom. If you want to pull for rhomboids, you kind of want to pull more up instead of down, you're pulling up like that. So that's how we're going to row. Not necessarily into the body, but up. The key to this to not feel it in your lower back is to just push your butt to the back wall. Excuse me? Yes, you have to push your butt to the back wall. So what I like to do is imagine holding groceries. You're, you're carrying your groceries, you have to shut the car door, bang. You kind of push your butt into it to close it. That's what I do anyway, I don't know what you guys do. Closing the car door, now I'm into the spot. Now all I'm doing is pretty much ripping the weight into my sternum controlling it down controlling it down and as you can see here I'm not just stopping here I'm actually going through so that's protraction of the scapula and that just gives you an extra deep stretch by the way the t-shirt that I'm wearing in this video is from a company called firebot clothing and they recently sent me some more clothing like this hoodie and these trackies here and I also have uh, a black t-shirt that I was wearing uh, that I also have that they've uh, passed on to me that I really love and the reason I like this is because it feels comfortable but also there isn't logo so I'm very uh, not anti-logo but I like my clothing to look slick and I don't like branding just kind of be like shouting at you so if you guys do want to grab something like this you can use my discount code which is in the description uh, they fit really well these pants are tapered so they come down through here which gives you kind of like a nice slimming look. And with the hoodie, it's just really easy. And it's starting to get colder now, looks really cool. It also comes down in a zip up hoodie and these pants also come in blue as well. Back to the video. For biceps, we have incline cable bicep curl. The reason I like cables is similar to why I like them for the behind the back cable lateral raises because there's always constant tension on the muscle. With incline cable bicep curl, it has this nice stretched position for the bicep. So like I've said a few times, if you want to grow your muscle, the best position to kind of encourage that process is that deep stretch. My biceps here are in that deep stretch. If I was to use dumbbells here, once again, there will be less tension on my muscles because gravity just pulls it down. But cables pulls it back to the origin point of the cable. So this time, I'm just going to keep my elbows still and try and squeeze a pencil in between my elbows and then coming back down. I don't want to curl and kind of come through like that. That's just unnecessary. All we're trying to do is pretty much treat our elbow like a hinge and just close the door like that. And the arm has to be slightly behind your body to get that deep stretch of the bicep. This is already burning. <laughs> Mate, this cable's trying to talk to me. Can you hear it? <laughs> He's like, help! For the quads, we have the 45 degree leg press. And the reason we have this, I know what you're thinking. Brock, why didn't you do a squat? The squat, it just gasses you. It's awesome. Don't get me wrong, you can handle a lot of weight, but you can also handle a lot of weight with the 45 degree leg press with your heels low. And the reason we put our heels low is because it gets our knees further over our toes, more knee flexion, which means more quads in the 45 degree leg press. And this, even though it's still fatiguing, it's not as fatiguing as the squat. You don't have to actually load your body, which means just carry load on your spine. My feet are low. There's no weight on the leg press here, so I'm not trying to be tough. We're just coming down here and see how my knees are really going further over my toes. If my feet were higher, my knees wouldn't go further over my toes, so I'll be getting less quads. So because we're focusing on the quads, our feet are nice and low, so we can get a nice range of motion. Toes slightly out, knees in line with our toes, coming down and pushing up, keeping our butt nice and uh, on the pad the entire rep. That's how you maintain good form and don't hurt your lower back. So coming as deep as possible. I can get to the bottom of the leg press here and then pushing through. When you're pushing, you wanna push through the middle of your feet to ensure that you're as strong as you can be. For our hamstrings, we have the barbell Romanian deadlift. I know what you're thinking again. Why aren't you doing the conventional deadlift? For the hamstrings, this is actually better. What I want to do is we start up top. We don't start from the floor. We start from the floor with a conventional deadlift. When we're doing a Romanian deadlift, we start from a rack. So we're gonna start from here and all we're doing, similar to the barbell bent of a row, closing that car door with our butt. So we're just going butt back, butt back, butt back until we get as low as we can, as low as our flexibility and mobility allows, and then we come back up. If we're pushing our butt back, we can't push our butt back any further, but we still go deeper, that's lower back. 
and that's where you'll get a trip to the hospital. Here's how we do it. This is also one of my favorites because you can also handle a lot of weight with the Romanian deadlift. So we're here, hands are slightly outside shoulder width, feet are relatively close together, pointing straight, butt back. Slight bend in your legs, keep pushing that butt back and this is how far I can go. If I go any further, that's all lower back. Now I'm hunched over. So I want to be here and then I just come up. As I'm coming up, squeezing my butt cheeks together. Butt back. Now I decided to do calves for one of the muscle groups instead of glutes because most guys don't care about glutes. If you do, that's completely cool. And if it is, I can talk about the best exercise for glutes and glutes. Actually, I made a YouTube video about it. The seven best exercises to do uh, at home for glutes. Check it out somewhere on my channel, it'll be there. Today I did calves because calves are cooler for most men. So I don't have a standing calf raise machine here where you would usually step in and go up, but I can show you the technique that I would recommend. So the main reason we're focusing on a standing calf raise is because this focuses on the gastroc. So the gastrocnemius is the calf muscle that's here. If you do the seated calf raise, which is another option, that works on your soleus, which is lower. No one really cares if you have big soleus, it just kind of gives you cankles and no one, <laughs> no one really wants cankles. <clears throat> if you have them, that's completely cool, but no one's really like trying to grow their cankles in the gym. Uh, we want a nice deep stretch at the bottom. So what I could do here is actually get a weight to just hold it to kind of help with the idea. We want a nice deep stretch at the bottom. Once again, this is one of the best places to build muscle. And then as we push up, we don't just push up, we actually try to push our heels forward and that gets us a little bit of extra range of motion for the squeeze. So all the way down and all the way up. My preferred tempo is like three seconds down, one second pause at the bottom, one up, one second pause at the top. So the tempo would be three, one, one, one. Now the ab exercise. To finish off these 10 exercises, this is the ab exercise that I think is the best for building your ab muscles. Not necessarily increasing your core strength, but getting more abs to pop. So a lot of people do the kneeling cable crunch with ropes. I never understood it. When you're trying to hold on to these ropes and it's really heavy, people mostly feel it in their forearms. We're not here to train our forearms, folks. We're here to train our abs, which is why I like to use just like a straight bar because you just have to cup it. You don't have to try and hold as hard as you can. You're not worrying about your forearms, you're worrying about your abs. The reason that I think this is the best ab exercise for building muscle, it has an advantage of being able to be tracked with weight. A lot of ab exercises, crunches, lying leg raises, hanging leg raises, hanging knee raises, gar hammer raises, any type of body weight exercise, you can only do more rep. You can't really make it harder. With a kneeling cable crunch, you can literally increase the weight. One week you're doing 65 kilos, the next week you're doing 75, the next week you're doing 80. You can see that progress. Instead of doing 20 reps, 25, 30, and then one day you're doing 100 crunches in a row, it's just boring. So with this, you can be more effective with your ab training. You wanna come down onto your knees. It's called the kneeling cable crunch for a reason. Instead of coming up on my toes like this with my feet, if you can come into my feet here, what I like to do is put them down like that. I think that's better. So I'll come on this angle feet down like this. If you come in, if you kind of zoom into my hips, what I like to do is kind of tuck like that. Instead of having like my butt back like this, like a duck, I like to tuck it. So this is called posterior tilt. I'm tucking my, my pelvis like this and I'm coming down and I'm trying to bring my nose to my knees. Instead of going down straight like that, I'm actually trying to curl my spine, which is completely safe because we're not loading our spine. So we're here, the weight's behind our head. I'm curling like this. And then I come up, but I still keep my hips tucked. They're not coming up and I'm not releasing like this. Here's what a few reps look like in a row. <sighs> Breathing in on your way up. Keep the hips tucked and go. Two, hips tucked. Those are the 10 best exercises I would use if I could only do 10 to stay as muscular or get as muscular and jacked as possible. A couple of things that I just want to close on. You want to focus on the deep stretch for building muscle. That's what most of the research is concluding. If an exercise is making the most of that deep stretch where the muscles kind of getting pulled apart at the bottom, that is a great place to be for building muscle. The second point is you want to choose exercises that have a great stimulus to fatigue ratio. High stimulus for building muscle, low amounts of fatigue. For example, that's why I don't have the back squat as my exercise, I have the 45 degree leg press because there's less fatigue and more stimulus. And if you like videos like this on my YouTube channel, right here is going to be more YouTube videos like this. And this is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like the best.